So this is the third part of a strategic foresight uh, lecture. And here we go through the case to understand how strategic foresight is actually done within corporate, in this, in this case a very large corporate. Between 2007 and 2010, I, I, I did work with Allianz, which is the world's largest private insurance company in Munich, in their headquarters, as a head of the strategic research and development. First of all, it was a tremendous working experience um, because it happened at the time when there was a great flux. The financial crisis came. And this company, for instance, had 1.3 trillion euros assets, uh, which they were responsible. So this was a huge challenge for them to understand how to take care of their assets, their clients, in case when everything seems to be crumbling down, as what it happened when uh, the the, the stock exchange started to revolt in 2008. Um, Aliats itself is uh, a very sturdy organization. If you look at these numbers, we see that it has a huge amount of operations and all aspects of insurance and financial services. So it's a very, very big company, one of the biggest global companies, in fact. So what was my work there? What did I do as a strategic foresight expert? First of all, I, I reported to the CEO and, and the board frequently for what I have seen and understood and the result of my, my work. I did some um, internal work inside the company to understand what's the sense of the company, how can I understand what are the key issues, what the people in the company see that has a significance for the future. I needed to create a model also for the company so that the company can tackle in a more systematic way the issues that had strategic importance and create the different means of, of, of involving this more kind of a stakeholder action and, and working with the ex different expert groups to bring in the knowledge and the insight into the company. That was also the time when I uh, started to work a lot with, um, uh, in the company with um, corporate responsibility program, which I helped to establish there. Um, consumer uh, um, sentiment changes were something that I was very interested to because I could have seen in my previous work that there was an interesting shift in those terms and I, and I wanted to track that. Um, I also launched something that was called a Rejuvenating Alliance, which was essentially a concept, a new service model and a concept to better take care of the new means of services for their, for their customers. And a lot of reports, of course. Uh, the unit where I was in was at that time called Group Economic uh, Research and Corporate Development. And, and, and we did a lot of strategic work. Uh, there, and uh, I was the head of uh, the section which is called Trends and Strategy. Uh, this map shows the basis of what we were working on. Uh, so we were looking at after the trends, we were looking after the risk. We needed to create the map out of those issues in a such a way that would give a clear implication for the companies on 
what's the significance and meaning of what we are observing as trends and risk and opportunities. So that was the type of the work uh, that was expected from me. And I also was uh, helping to form a kind of a baseline scenario for the company for the next 10 years against which we were constantly testing whether our assumptions still hold for the future. So, so there were, um, so there were uh, a, a number of uh, processes where we were actually uh, doing this with a, with a, with a company management and, and this type of the matrix that we were using of various time horizons uh, and assessing the significance of those single uh, issues or phenomena or events. Uh, we placed this type of the matrix and then we were asking, and okay, what were the issues that we knew to be um, um, caring about? Also, uh, we needed to do some process innovation here, which was that, okay, how does this flux of communication and information uh, um, um, travels through the company. So this goes as a clockwise, so that we first had a lot of kind of external input that challenged our own input, and then we took some of the burning issues there, and, we will, and then we check with our business units that are they with what we have been seeing or do they see something totally different and then we came back and and worked on it and they presented to our the, the the trend assessment committee which was the central kind of a body in the organization uh, to discuss on these issues and after that we we started to prepare a presentation for the board and and then we went and took a couple of most important issues for the board and challenged the board to think about what should we do about it. And then it came back from the board and then uh, we found uh, an owner for those issues. And, and that is how we actually uh, built uh, this process uh, internally. Um, there was also a lot of effort there to actually to validate the insight that we were gathering. So we were also working a lot with, the, as I said earlier, about the consumer sentiments, trying to track where are the new interest, but also trying to go beyond the consumer sentiments, try to see what might be the next there. So it was a kind of a rather complex process, a lot of checks and balances and feedbacks, which is always needed to, to, to hone the idea of what should be actually done. But that was something as a total that I called foresight generator. And we then, uh, when we were looking at these um, um, kind of a external risks, because we needed to kind of a be, be, pre be, be preparing for all types of possible risks that, that would come from external world. Actually, the whole idea of this, why strategic foresight was so much needed actually started after 9-11 because then the company understood that there was not much preparation for this type of very surprising event. So we tried to imagine this different type of surprising events and risk and, and think beforehand, what should we do in case this would become reality? Uh, so all in all, this work that I did as a strategic foresight expert, uh, what I learned in those uh, 
number of years is that analyzing risk and trends are really, is really a challenging task. And, and it necessitates you to understand the business you're in, but particularly it necessitates to understand the context in which all this happens. Otherwise, your piece of advice might not be so worthwhile. Uh, I also learned that to be effective as a strategic foresight expert in the company, you need to have an internal network inside the company because you need to have the pulse, you need to understand how company actually ticks. And that takes a time and an effort to do that. But if you don't do that, you are missing something very essential information. And that is by the way why most of the changes that are proposed in the companies do not bear much fruit do not actually get to where it had been meant uh, to go. So, so there needs to be this kind of a sense-making process there. And then I also learned very much that future, long-term future in particular, is always undervalued in corporate circumstances. And the short-term uh, issues always are kind of invading the agenda in the way uh, that is compelling. So there needs to be a lot of uh, sort of fight there to, to keep the long-term issues in the agenda because in the end the, 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 the purpose of the strategic foresight is to give a long-term vision, an understanding of the future issues that are necessary for the company to then, to draw from this insight or foresight to the more immediate and mid-term decision-making procedures. That is why strategic foresight should be made and that is what what is there for. Thank you.